from David Sharman. Uh, David Sharman's from Ampere, uh, which is a UK based, in fact, I was just told, the oldest surviving UK producer of wind turbines. Um, and they export internationally. Um, David's a member of a number of um, committees and commissions on uh, wind turbines, um, including the, the British Wind Energy Association. He is a former officer in the Royal Navy and project manager at Shell, um, and is going to give us a perspective on, 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 the, on this question from, um, from his Ampere uh, current position. Hello. I've spent most of my lifetime kicking around the world in, in many different places, um, including quite a lot down in Peru, Venezuela, Argentina, um, and, and many others. What I have been doing since 2003 is I've been running Ampere, which is, is Britain's oldest wind turbine manufacturer. And so that's really, really the context I'm coming from, and I'm an engineer by training. There's two uses for small wind turbines. One of them is off-grid and the other is on-grid. The on-grid use for small wind turbines is only commercially viable and by that I mean is only a, a good investment for a consumer if you have artificial subsidy from a government by means of, for example, a feed-in tariff or a grant scheme. Those are almost always in the developed nations. The other use is off-grid. And the off-grid uses are either in the developed nations or the developing nations. They are almost always off-grid for diesel substitution. They're complementary to solar, but also a competitor to solar. In the developed world, we're seeing about a 20 to 30% compound annual growth rate per year for small wind turbines. Okay, 20 to 30%. That is less than we're seeing in large wind turbines. It's less than we're seeing in solar. Unfortunately, I can't put up the slides that I brought along with me to, to give you these, these numbers. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, the cost per kilowatt and the cost per kilowatt hour are both at the moment going up. They were falling at around about 3 to 4 percent per year from 1980 through to 2000. They're now rising at around about 2.8 percent per year. I've done a, a survey amongst all of the, the key leading manufacturers. Um, to go back through old price lists and, and, and come up with this data. That is coincident with what has happened in the large wind turbine industry. If you're a peak oil person, you will know the significance of it. The solar industry's cost per kilowatt, cost per kilowatt hour, is at the moment declining, but is beginning to flatten. If you eliminate the artificial subsidies going into solar, it is pretty much actually flat and likely to go up, I suspect, unless we make the transition to, to thin films, which I'm not sure is actually going to happen. Over the last 10 years, there has been an attempt made to professionalize small wind. There are, depending on where you put your cutoff in small wind, whether you put it at five kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, whether you talk in meter square terms or whatever, but roughly speaking, there are between 10 and 20 professional manufacturers in the Western world. This is the electricity producing small wind turbines. There are some others who are the water pumpers. I mean, the largest water pumping manufacturer in the world is in fact an Argentine producer. Okay, they're the largest user in the world of, of water pumping wind turbines. But in electricity producing, there's 10 to 20 serious commercial operations. There's about 300 non-serious, non-commercial operations. The barrier to entry to get a commercial, properly sorted out wind turbine company that is viable and self-sustaining in the Western world is $5 million. You've got to burn $5 million to play. In the developing world, I rather suspect 
but it's somewhere between half a million and a million dollars. One of my colleagues who runs the most successful small wind turbine company in the Western world runs Bergy, Bergy Wind Power. It's a second generation company, so it's not been going quite as long as ours. We've been going 40 years, they've been going 30 years. They actually have a, a wind turbine producing plant in China. They're just pulling out of China right now. Because that's the, the other game that's going on. The Chinese are coming to market, and they're coming to market by the thousands. We produce maybe a thousand wind turbines a year. When you're at a hundred wind turbines a year, you use one technology. When you're at a thousand wind turbines a year, you use a second technology. When you're at 10,000 wind turbines a year, you move to a different technology entirely. There is only one wind turbine manufacturer in the world who is at 10,000 wind turbines a year. It's taken them $50 million to get there. Every two years, they go back to their backers and they get another $10 million. It's been absolutely vital over the last 10 years to bring standards into this so that the consumer who's making a very substantial investment <coughs> in relation to whatever their annual income is knows that they can buy with confidence. That most successful company who's now making 10,000 wind turbines per year was for 10 years advertising a product as being a 400 watt wind turbine. They bankrupted every other small wind turbine manufacturer in North America because it wasn't. It was only a 100 watt wind turbine. But it said 400 watts on the box and every other wind turbine manufacturer who was in competition with them in North America went bankrupt. So it's been absolutely vital that we start to bring standards through and enforce them. And now you will find that there are nine wind turbines that are independently certified. At the moment, the scheme that is adopted around the world is the UK's microgeneration certification scheme. It's interoperable with the small wind certification scheme in America, who are at the moment, they're in the middle of going to market, they've got their first wind turbines actually going through certification. It's built on the IEC standards, and over the next two to three years, you'll see about 30 to 50 wind turbines through it. So you'll see anything from about 100 watts through to about 50 kilowatts certified and available to buy. And that includes some people from China. And in that process, every single country in the world who is a member of the IEC, and many who were not, and who are members of the IEA, and even those who are not members of the IEA, were invited to participate in that process. The Argentines are involved, the Spanish are involved, the, Sw the Swedish are involved, the Italians, the French, the Germans, the Danish, the Americans, the Canadians, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Taiwanese. The Indians were asked, the Indians didn't turn up. The Israelis turned up. Everybody has been involved. And so what you will see is in about two to three years time, you can go to your local store or on your local internet, wherever you are in the world and buy with confidence. And if a wind turbine manufacturer has not got that mark of approval, then you shouldn't go to them. And that's the only way we'll have an honest industry, where you can buy a turbine and you don't get people saying, oh, we still have a few problems with it. Thanks very much, David. A very interesting contribution. A perfect timing to bring in Aaron. Um, with, so that's a kind of an industry perspective, if you like, on producing in volume. Um, and that, then we're going to hear from Aaron, who is... Um, he's been working on um, small wind turbines um, for quite a while. He's um, got a history of this with um, Engineers Without Borders at Nottingham, where he started up the branch there, was one of the um, founders. Um, he's also worked with, in Sri Lanka with Practical Action on um, small hydro and plastic recycling. Um, and since graduating, he set up V3 Power, which has a stall right over there, which is a workers' cooperative which teaches people how to build wind turbines. Um, as well as other engineering and education projects. So, Aaron, please. 